In this video, we are going to discuss meiosis, specifically the steps of meiosis and how meiosis compares to mitosis. So in previous videos, we discussed the cell cycle. We said that most of the cells in the body are going to reproduce themselves. They're going to need to undergo mitosis. They will hang out in the interphase for 90% of their life cycle. And then as they gear up for mitosis, they will go through phases of interphase. G1, where the cell grows bigger, starts replicating um, the RNA inside the cell. DNA synthesis, the S phase of interphase, where the DNA is going to be copied and duplicated. And we form sister chromatids like these right here. And then G2 phase is cell growth, just making sure we have all the organelles, all the proteins, all the RNA and DNA, everything is duplicated in order to undergo mitosis. So when we undergo mitosis, that cell is going to make a carbon copy of itself. And at the end, you will have two identical daughter cells. When we discuss meiosis, meiosis is only needed for cells that are going to produce gametes, cells that are going to produce eggs and sperm. That is the only time we are going to discuss meiosis. All the other cells in the body are going to undergo mitosis. But if we need to produce eggs or sperm, those stem cells that produce the eggs and sperm will undergo mitosis first. They're gonna go through interphase, have S phase, duplicate the genetic material, undergo mitosis, and recreate a new stem cell, and then the other stem cell, the other daughter cell that's just like the other stem cell, is going to go through meiosis. So meiosis is going to have two rounds of cell division. We're going to have meiosis one and meiosis two. Each round is going to have a prophase, a prometaphase, a metaphase, an anaphase, and a telophase and cytokinesis. After that, you'll see a Roman numeral. If you see Roman numeral one, you're in the first round of cell division, meiosis one. If you see a Roman numeral two, you're in the second round of cell division for meiosis two. So when we talked about mitosis and genes, we talked about that genes are part of DNA. DNA is gonna have a lot of coding and non-coding segments in those linear strands of chromosomes. So the genes that code for a substance, it may be multiple genes that code for a trait. It may be just one gene that codes for a certain trait. Um, when you have a gene on a chromosome that codes for a certain trait, it's located in a certain position on that chromosome. So say we had a, a chromosome and that chromosome coded for blood type. That gene is located on that specific chromosome in that specific location and that is called a locus. We also discussed in previous videos that you are going to have, as a human, 23 chromosomes that you gain from your mother and 23 chromosomes that you gain from your father. If we pair those chromosomes up, we could pair those 23 pairs up and create a karyotype. If we found the chromosome that coded for, we were just discussing blood type, if we found the chromosome that coded for blood type with mom, we can pair that with the chromosome that's going to code for blood type from dad, and those two chromosomes are called homologous pairs. So on a karyotype, you're going to pair up all the homologous pairs, see those 23 pairs, and you can figure those out by the shape of the chromosome, how long it is, where the centromere is, where the dyes take up within the strands of genetic material. So we have a karyotype here. We can see the 23 different sets of chromosomes, and the first Sets 1 through 22 are going to control somatic information. This other set over here, this one last set of chromosomes in the karyotype is the 23rd set, and that is going to have our sex chromosomes on it. So if it was two Xs, we would have a female. We would code for a female. If, if it was an X and a Y chromosome that had the XRY gene on it, then that would code for a male. So the last pair out of the 23 pairs is going to code for the sex chromosomes. So back to cell division and meiosis. We said there was meiosis one and meiosis two. Each one had their own round of cell division. So we're gonna talk about the very first part of prophase one involved in meiosis one. So in prophase, 
is very similar to the steps of mitosis that we've discussed before. In prophase, we're going to start to dissolve that nuclear envelope that surrounded the genetic material. The chromosomes are going to condense, and we talked about that we'd already duplicated the genetic material before in the S phase of interphase. In prophase one, we're going to pair up those sister chromatids that we made in the S phase of interphase and put them together. We're going to put the homologous set of sisters, this set of sisters with this set of sisters. So when we put the two pairs of sisters together, those two homologous chromosomes and their sisters together, we have four chromosomes set together. Those four chromosomes are called a tetrad. So in prophase one, we are going to have the tetrads that come together. The two sisters that are homologous will come together and they are going to be attached very closely. So the sisters are attached at the centromere, but the tetrad is going to be attached all along the length of the chromosome. There's a very important step that happens in prophase one, and this very important step is called crossover. Crossover is where our tetrads are woven tightly together. We said that they are tightly bound together, and at this point where they are bound, sometimes genetic material will cross over from one chromosome to the next. So here we have our sisters here, and here's our sisters here. We bound them together in a tetrad over here, and this genetic material can swap from one chromosome to the next, and they will recombine. Now we have recombinant chromosomes. So we still have one chromosome in this example, and we're going to say blue is dad, and we'll say red is mom. We have one chromosome that looks and retains all of the genes um, that was from dad in that chromosome. And then this other part on the sister, the sister is no longer identical. Now the sister has some genetic information that came from mom's chromosome on the tip end because of crossover. And the same thing happened with the sister, sisters that came from mom. We have one that's identical to the genetic information that came from mom, and then on the other sister is no longer identical. This sister has some genetic information that came from dad. So crossover is going to allow these gametes to have unique genetic information. And again, it happens at prophase one. And prometaphase is similar to the prometaphase that we discussed before. The nuclear envelope is completely dissolved, and those spindle fibers that are going to come along are now going to attach. So the spindle fibers are going to attach to the homologous chromosomes and fuse to their kinetic cores. Metaphase 1 in meiosis. Metaphase starts with an M, and remember in metaphase, everything lines up in the middle at the metaphase plate. So we are going to have those tetrads. They are going to line up in the middle of the cell at our metaphase plate during metaphase one. There is another important step. So we talked about the first important step was crossover that happened at prophase one. And in metaphase one, we have another important step and it's called the law of independent assortment. So we said at metaphase one, the chromosomes are going to line up in the middle, but which way are the chromosomes going to line up? What chromosome is going to end up on what half of the cell. So if we put the metaphase plate right down the middle, in this example on the left hand side are the blue chromosomes. So we have all of dad's chromosomes on the left hand side and we have all of mom's chromosomes, dad's, and all of mom's chromosomes on the right hand side. That is one way to sort this material. If we sorted it this way with all of dad's on the left hand side and all of mom's on the right hand side, then we would see after metaphase one, We'll go down to this combination. And then when those split again in metaphase two and they split again in anaphase, they will split apart and the end result is going to be these four cells right here. One cell will have all of mom's identical genes. Another cell will have most of mom's identical genes, but a little bit of dad's in there due to the crossover. This cell over here is going to have dad's genes with a little bit of mom's in there, and so is this one. Dad's genes with a little bit of mom's in there, just on different chromosomes. So this is one way to sort them. All of dad's, again, on one side, and all of mom's on the other side. 
but what if we sorted it a different way? Again, this is totally random. So we could sort it this way. Well, we have one of dads and one of moms, and we have one of moms and one of dads. So we have a 50-50 on the chromosomes on either side of this. If we went with the right-hand side, go through metaphase and anaphase and telophase, repeat the cycle. By the end, we are going to have four gametes on this side. We will have mom's longer chromosomes, and one of them will be all of mom, and one of them will be mom plus dad's genetic information. The shorter chromosome, when we split it, would be dad's chromosome. This will be all of dad's chromosome, and this will be dad's short chromosome with a little bit of mom's genetic material. This side, we go through the phases of cell division. Our end result is going to be these two cells over here. So we have dad's longer chromosome over here all of dad's genetic material over here dad plus mom's genetic material on that long chromosome on the short chromosome on this side we have mom's genetic material plus a little bit of dad's and on the short chromosome over here it's a hundred percent mom's genetic material so the law of independent assortment is just about which way which side of the metaphysical metaphase plate are those chromosomes going to fall into. Chromosomal alignment is the attachment of those spindle fibers. So in meiosis 1, the spindle fibers are going to pull apart our homologs. In meiosis 2, the spindle fibers are going to attach and they're going to pull apart the sisters. So we discussed prophase 1 where a crossover is going to happen and we're going to get some new genetic information swapped out there. Then we discussed Prometaphase with the attachment of the spindle fibers. Then we had metaphase, where is another important step, law of independent assortment, which way on the on the equator are those genes going to fall, right or left side? Then we have anaphase one. Anaphase has an A, it also is going to be where the homologs are pulled apart. So in anaphase one, we're going to pull the homo homologous chromosomes apart and they're going to start to go towards the poles. In telophase, those homologous chromosomes have now gone towards the poles. We're going to start to cover them up with that membrane again and surround them. We're going to break off the spindle fibers and those are going to dissolve and our end result is we are going to have two cells. Here's going to be our nuclear membrane, we will have two cells, two daughter cells at the end of telophase and cytokinesis 1. Those two daughter cells, though, only have one set. They are haploid. They only have half of the genetic information in each cell. So we have two cells. They have sister chromatids, but again, that's still just half of the genetic information in each cell. So by the end of meiosis 1, we end up with two daughter cells that are haploid. We've done with our first round of cell division. Now we're going to move back to a second round of cell division, but we start the cycle all over again. So we're going to start again with prophase. And the last round in meiosis 1, we had built up a nuclear membrane. In prophase 2, we are going to start to break down the nuclear membrane again. We're going to start to form spindle fibers in prophase 2. In prometaphase, those spindle fibers are going to attach to the kinetochores and they're going to attach to the sister chromatids instead of the homologous ones. In metaphase 2, remember those chromosomes line up in the middle on the metaphase plate. They'll line up in the middle and they will line up at random whatever side goes to whatever side, right or left side. At anaphase, remember anaphase starts with an A, means it's going to be pulled apart. In anaphase 2, we are going to pull apart the sisters. In anaphase 1, we pulled apart 
the homologous chromosomes. And in phase two, we pull apart the sisters. Our very last round of cell division of, of meiosis two is going to be telophase and cytokinesis two. So in telophase, we're going to cover up that genetic material with its own nuclear membrane. We're going to start pinching in the cytoplasm and undergo cytokinesis. So our end result is going to be instead of two haploid daughter cells, we have split them with cytokinesis. We are going to have four haploid daughter cells because we split those sisters in anaphase two. And each one of these is genetically unique. You can look at the colors of the chromosomes found in each one of these gametes, whether they're egg or sperm, each one of these is going to be genetically unique. So we can see, again, summarized phases of meiosis. There's meiosis one and meiosis two. Each one is going to have rounds of cell division, prophase, prometaphase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and cytokinesis. Cycle starts again. Comparing meiosis to mitosis. Remember, mitosis is replication of a regular cell, and the end result is going to give us two daughter cells, and those daughter cells are going to be identical. At the end of meiosis, we are going to have one, two, three, four haploid daughter cells. So each one will be haploid, and they are all unique. Every single gamete here is going to have different genes inside of them. So four haploid unique cells are the end result of meiosis, where the end result of mitosis is going to be two, and they're going to be diploid because they are identical to the parent cell, two daughter cells that are identical diploid.